Are you wondering what kind of portfolio it takes to land a job at one of the world's top tech companies without any formal instructional design experience? Well, in this video, we're going to take a look at exactly that. So today we're going to do a deep dive into Joe Steuben Rauch's portfolio. Um, some of you may know him by Joe Steuben. He was a full-time tenured history professor, and after hearing about instructional design, six months later, he is now a full-time curriculum developer at Amazon Web Services. So the portfolio did play a role in um, helping him land that opportunity. And the reason some of you may know him is because we did a Q&A session with him where he talked about exactly how he landed that opportunity. So definitely check that out if you haven't seen it already. And we also did a Q&A with Joe's hiring manager, Tara Coulson. So I will link both of those videos in the description just to give you some more context here. But yeah, this is going to start off a new portfolio review series. If you would like to see more videos like this, just let me know in the comments and I will make sure to keep these coming on a regular basis. But let's take a look at Joe's portfolio here. So here we are. So when we land on the site, we see we have this very clean hero image, right? So there's no image, it's, it's all type. So hi, I am Joe. I'm a curriculum developer who solves business problems. So it's very clean, very minimal. Maybe an opportunity here to like evoke more emotion. Like we, we have a lot of negative space here, but that, that negative space is still working for Joe. I think it does show, wow, he's very careful with the words and the elements he does choose because you know, it, it definitely does have this like clean professional vibe right when we land on the site. And that's what we want to do with hero images. We want to evoke some kind of emotion or draw people in. So that looks great. And now we get into his projects right beneath that hero image. So we will take a look at each one of these projects. With the sizing here, we could probably make this a bit more even because we see we have a lot of negative space beneath the learn more button. So we could probably balance that out a little better, maybe with these column widths, but it still, it still looks good enough. We can definitely get a good, a good feel for the project before even diving in. Um, the title itself is quite descriptive. This is an ICU soft skills tutorial. And Joe even tells us about some of the tools that he used to create this. So we know it's a storyline project. We know he used XAPI and Twine to me signifies branching scenario. So a nice little teaser of what this project is all about. And we have these, these call to action buttons, this learn more button in this turquoise color that really pops off the page. So that contrast is really important for these buttons um, because it, it definitely makes me look at it and, and want to click it. So let's learn more here. We get brought into the page. We have this nice full screen image. We have this uh, mock-up. If you're not sure how to create mock-ups like this for your own portfolio, I also have a video about that, about how to make those really easily. So I'll link that in the top right and in the description as well. So we have this immediate call to action to view the demo, which is good because we can see if I open that up, we can actually start the experience. But before we do that, let's Let's see what else Joe has going on on this page. We have an overview. It's a concept project. It's a branching scenario, and it helps healthcare professionals have difficult conversations with families of patients. So we're in the ICU. We're having tough conversations with um, the patient's family about the state of their health. And Joe is obviously, he worked with the subject matter expert to follow this specific spikes protocol. So this is good. We can see it's based off of this real protocol. Joe tells us he also used XAPI and JavaScript to track the learner experience. So that can look really good to some tech companies who maybe want to push the boundaries with data and learning analytics. Um, so definitely, if you're not afraid of code and if you do want to dive into XAPI, always a good idea to incorporate that into your portfolio somehow. So Joe starts it off nice and clearly telling us what the client's problem was. So remember, this is a concept project, but he is imagining here is the real world problem this project can help solve. And you've heard me say it before, I'll say it again. Those projects are so strong because they show that you can use your instructional design skill set to solve real world problems. So we're very clear on the audience. 
healthcare professionals in the ICU. And you can, this is just joestubin.com. Of course, I will link the site beneath the video. So if you want to read this for yourself and learn more about Joe's process, you can do so. But that is what's so good about this. Like he does dive into the process. He talks about the problem. He tells us about the solution and it makes sense. He talks about his design approach, you know, screenshots included throughout. We can see the complexity of the branching. This is twine. So with those screenshots really highlight some of that. I mean, look at these triggers. If you're in, if you've been in storyline, you can see like, there's a lot going on on these slides. So it shows Joe is not afraid of any complex programming. And then it gets even more complex and talks about XAPI implementation. And we can see that statement stream. So overall, great write up. Uh, we can see some very specific skills Joe has here. It's not just the final product, but we're getting a behind the scenes look. And if I'm a hiring manager, look at this. I, I'm, I'm feeling confident. Okay, yeah, he's not afraid to get really technical. You know, he's not afraid of branching. He's not afraid of XAPI. Like this, these are all good signs. And he ends it again with another strong call to action to view that demo. So here we are. Let's just check it out for a little bit. The title screen is designed very well. It looks very nice. We get a little bit of context. The spikes protocol is introduced. And now we're right into the scenario. We're meeting Walter. He's been in the ICU for two days. He had a stroke and it's getting worse. His chances for of survival are, are not very high. They're pretty low. So now we have to communicate with Walter's family. So you see, yeah, Joe drew on action mapping for this. He's bringing us right into the action. We're in this story and we need to, to navigate this conversation well so that we don't further upset the family or, or cause any additional distress. Okay, so he asks us, select the best course of action for when we meet the family. So we can give them an honest, realistic update in a timely manner. I'll, I'll let you go through this on, on your own if you'd like to really read all of this, but you see that smooth animation, it looks nice. There is a bit of text on the screen, but I, I remember talking to Joe about this and I think we, he wanted to highlight this, this complex animation that he worked out. So I'm just going to click through this a bit and we will see where we wind up. Okay, so we have this outcome. Walter's family is struggling to respond to the shock of this difficult situation. Despite our efforts, the interaction with you um, was experienced as negative and they don't view you as partners and allies in the decision-making process. So now we have this nice button right here, why? Why did this happen? And I love this screen because you can see Joe is using variables here. We can see each part of this spikes process, we can see how we responded. We did not have an ideal response for the setup. Our emotional responses were not ideal. And if we click on one of these, like, you know, say, okay, what could I have done better in the setup? Beautiful, we have this review screen. It tells us, it gives us more information so that we can make that choice right the next time. Something I would have liked, which may have been in line with action mapping, is, is having some sort of resource available. So you see here, I don't know anything about the Spikes protocol, and I'm kind of guessing my way through this. You'll see in other projects, we'll have some sort of mentor character that we can speak to, or some sort of job aid, something to reference as we make these choices. But maybe there's something to be said here about just diving in and trying our best. And it, we also... the. You know, these employees may also have, have learned about the spikes protocol before just diving into this scenario based course. So one little thing, but definitely check this out to see what Joe did here and experience it for yourself. Let's navigate back to the portfolio. So th that, that, that project we just looked at, this one is like Joe's flagship project. So it shows he can do it all right. He can identify this performance problem. He can work with a subject matter expert. He can match a solution to the problem and then he can go ahead and design and develop it all the way through. So obviously that full skill set is really valuable in the market right now and flagship projects that show you can use this skill set to solve a real world problem, just knock it out of the park. They're really good. So now we have Joe's supporting projects, which are much shorter, right? They're, they just show off little things. The write up is quite, quite short here. I think, Joe, there are probably opportunities to build this out a bit more. But let's view the demo. 
So here we can learn about Limerick, um, the region, and we can just select these different tabs to learn about it. So it's just a one page tab interaction. It's very simple. This was the first thing Joe ever did in Storyline, I believe. And it was when I had first started like, you know, chatting with him. And he sent me this and I knew right away, I'm like, Joe, you're going to go far in this field because the attention to detail here is really good. The layout is really solid. So just immediately as a first project, I knew like Joe, Joe was going places. <laughs> um, and, and at the time, Joe was saying, he's like, I can't take too much credit. I, I mirrored this off of like another tab interaction that I saw that I really liked. And I think that is a great strategy. You'll see this if we do other portfolio reviews like this. It's a very valid approach to try to recreate something that you see that you like, right? Like don't copy it word for word. But drawing on things that you know work because you know they look really good and trying to recreate it in storyline, that is a very strong approach to, you know, learning visual design skills and challenging your programming skills in storyline. So it looks great. So that's one supporting project that shows off some basic storyline development skills, but overall it's an attention to detail and some nice visual design skills. And let's look at the next supporting project. It's this Norway map quiz. Again, a, a fairly short write-up, maybe opportunities to add more there. But I know Joe um, is learning Norwegian and he likes the language. So he drew on that to come up with this um, county quiz where you have to label the different counties in Norway. So he tells us first, click the map to select a country then click the correct county, or sorry, the county, and then click the correct county name below. So we can select one of these, and now we have to pair it with a county. There we go, I got that one correct. I doubt I get this one correct. So you see, we're, he's using variables. Oh, we do have a study guide here. Click the map to study. Oh, good, so we can even, it's like we can quiz ourselves here before doing the drag, or doing the, the click-based interaction, the quiz interaction, basically. So this is great. Definitely shows off some storyline development skills, shows off some visual design skills. The layout is pretty nice. Maybe the user experience could have been a bit better because it's not super intuitive when I land on this to click here and click there. But if you read the instructions first, it, it, it you can use it quite well. So uh, another another strong project. We can see here, Joe is using these supporting projects to show off the storyline development skills and the visual design skills. And those skills are very valuable in, in the market today, especially if you're al already a good communicator and, and you have the design skills from like a teaching background or something along those lines. And finally, Joe um, used one of my tutorials on my website to generate a PDF from an Articulate Storyline project. So another very straight, short, to the point write-up. Um, the visual design here, I think something happened with this text box. It, it probably would have been better if this was, if the text like filled out this box a bit more, but it's very simple. We enter our name and we enter the date format that we would like. And when we press print, it generates, it downloads a PDF right to our computer for us. We can open it up. It has our name on it and it has our chosen date format. So this one, again, it's a, it's a very simple one slide interaction, but it shows that Joe can work with a, a tutorial and then take his own spin on it using some JavaScript to offer these like multiple date formats. So it just shows he's not afraid to get technical. He, he knows his way around some basic JavaScript and he's eager to learn more. Okay. so. Hopefully the, it was in, it was helpful going through these projects and just seeing like not every project needs to be like a month long, 40 hours a week, you're building this amazing thing. I'm sure Joe spent a lot of time on this flagship project, but these supporting projects, you can knock, you can whip up some of these in a few days maybe. So, you know, not everything needs to be a masterpiece, but if it looks good and it functions well and you have that attention to detail, it can do a lot of work for you. So that's Joe's portfolio. He has some resources here um, because Joe has been doing some content. Like I said, here is that question and answer session we did together. Joe did a very simple and to the point um, tutorial. Just again, he 
for one of Jolt Ola's tutorials, Joe said, I know what's going on here. I know some JavaScript. I can actually take this a bit further and I can create a tutorial to help people do exactly that. So it's pretty cool. It, 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 it makes it so a storyline course knows the day of week and can greet you accordingly. And then he has some reviews. We did, he did a next API show and tell event at this session I did a while back. And he even did an X API tutorial of his own. So this shows like he's committed to sharing his knowledge. I think there are some opportunities to maybe work on the spacing a little bit here. Like the layout is a, a bit tight and these photos, like this one kind of blends into the background. This, you know, I think we could have, if Joe wanted to take the time, he could have done some more. Well, like, like here, obviously there's a lot of effort. This is a mock-up. I don't know if that's exactly what we need here, but maybe there could be some kind of consistent cover photo for each one of these resources that would just make the site more cohesive. If we go to Joe's about page, we see we get a shift here. We have kind of like a dark mode. So we have this black background with this white text popping out. So the layout is, is pretty cool. It's, it's very, it's very straightforward. So what I do, we have this sentence. What I bring, we have a few phrases essentially. I really like this, um, the storytelling sense of a professional historian because that's highlighting his background, right? He's like embracing, I, I am or I was a professional historian and I'm ready to use that skill set to serve your audience, to, to help people feel valued and empowered. And I feel like I'm sure there are more opportunities to bring this message throughout the portfolio. But Joe went for this really minimal, I'm solving business problems, whereas he probably could have brought who he is as a person and, and, and highlighted his experiences in that storytelling sense more deeply within the portfolio. And I'm sure he would have done that if he didn't find that early success with this early iteration of his portfolio website. But I th I've, I've been hearing more and more hiring managers do want to get a sense of who you are when they're on your portfolio site, a sense of your personality, your passion. So if you can bring that in, you know, even this about page could have been longer and a bit more, um, you know, elaborate, but, but this got the job done at a glance. We can see what Joe can do. He has a photo of himself, which is great. It makes it more personable. I, I trust Joe more. I can see who he is. It's not just only text and, and colors. So that's good. The layout, maybe there is an opportunity to approve the layout, but I still, I do think it looks nice on first glance. Uh, it's just maybe a little imbalanced. I, I think that, I think the improvement here is this about, this is like the page title and these headings are kind of like subheadings. So maybe just playing around with the hierarchy there, maybe about could have been a lot bigger, or maybe these headings could have been like all in one column and the photo, even with them on the, on the other column. Things to play around with here, but still it looks good. And then again, just this is the only page without this like dark mode, black background. So if we made that more consistent with these other pages, I think that could have helped the site overall. But still, this page does look look nice. And then we have this contact page, contact me. We have Joe's email address and this form that we can use. Um, I think I think the the labels do look a bit big for modern forms but overall gets the job done. We know how to contact Joe if we need to. And, and, he, and in the footer on every single page, we also have Joe's email address and a LinkedIn account. So he's definitely not making it hard to get in touch with him, which I think is important on, on any portfolio site. You wanna make it easy for people to take that next step, which may be emailing you, reaching out about a possible position, um, or checking out your LinkedIn to learn more about your professional experiences. So. I hope this is helpful. If you have any more questions about this or maybe feedback for Joe, feel free to post it below. I know Joe would be happy to hear from you on LinkedIn or via email um, if this did help you. And like I said, if you want to see more videos like this, let me know below because I can I can get portfolio feedback all day. And I, I, I have a full video about how to create your instructional design portfolio. So feel free to check out that one next if you don't know where to start. So I'll see you in the next video.